Welcome to Real Estate Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Nordic Fund with $2 billion cash targets bargain property deals. Starmer to make housing pledge in leader's speech. Hong Kong buyout leaves property woes clear as mud. China's country garden succumbs to debt crisis after sales drop. Tiny homes are the hot new homeowner's accessory. Nordic Fund with $2 billion cash targets bargain property deals. Bloomberg. Nordic Fund Rep is taking advantage of Sweden's real estate crisis by snapping up properties from struggling landlords. The firm is looking to capitalize on indebted companies rushing to divest properties they can no longer finance with expensive bonds. NREP expects to see more transactions with real estate companies still struggling to refinance $25 billion of maturing bonds through 2025. Starmer to make housing pledge in leader's speech. BBC. Sir Keir Starmer, the leader of the UK Labour Party, has pledged to give extra powers to housing and local mayors if Labour wins the next election. Speaking at the party's annual conference, Starmer promised to accelerate building on unused urban land and build new towns near English cities. He also said that extra police would guarantee patrols in town centers. Starmer suggested that a Labour victory would bring a decade of national renewal after 13 years of Conservative-led government. The four-day conference in Liverpool is expected to be the last before a general election next year. Hong Kong buyout leaves property woes clear as mud. Reuters breaking views. Haitong Securities has offered a 114% premium to buy out the remaining shares of its subsidiary, Haitong International Securities Group, that it does not already own. Haitong International has suffered losses due to the collapse of Chinese property firms, including clients such as HNA and Evergrande. The lack of transparency on the subsidiary's assets prevents the deal from setting a benchmark for other brokerages with exposure to China's real estate market. China's country garden succumbs to debt crisis after sales drop. Wall Street Journal. Chinese property developer Country Garden Holdings has said it may not be able to meet its offshore debt obligations when they are due, as the country's housing market continues to decline. The company, which recently defaulted on a $60 million Hong Kong dollar loan, reported a 44% drop in contracted sales for the first three quarters of this year compared to the same period in 2022. Country Garden has hired financial advisors and plans to hold talks with its offshore creditors in an attempt to resolve the issues. Tiny homes are the hot new homeowner's accessory. Wall Street Journal. Accessory dwelling units, ADUs, are becoming increasingly popular as homeowners seek ways to lower their housing costs by renting out additional space. ADUs can be small standalone homes, or they can be located in a basement or above a garage. Construction costs for ADUs typically amount to around $100,000, according to building permit data company Bilti. States including California, Oregon, and Maine have passed laws to encourage the construction of ADUs, which are seen as a quick way to increase housing supply. Singapore is fighting rising seas to save $50 billion in real estate. Bloomberg. Singapore is planning to increase the height of current coastal reservoir dikes, build tide gates and more embankments, and raise the height of airport runways and drainage systems as part of its efforts to protect the city-state from rising sea levels, according to a Bloomberg report. The government says 70% of Singapore's coastline is already protected by human-made barriers, but this infrastructure will need reinforcing as tropical storms and sea levels rise. The country is also considering installing storm surge barriers on its waterways, which could be closed during storms to protect industrial areas. Meanwhile, businesses including property company City Developments are taking their own action, the firm has built barriers and water level sensors at several buildings in Singapore, while Fraser's property has added floodgates to a 38-story tower in the business district. Singapore's government has put SGD5BN, $3.7 billion, towards a coastal and flood protection fund. Hong Kong developers' $56 billion route may deepen as risks mount. Bloomberg. Hong Kong developers' shares may not be a bargain despite a $56 billion route, as the correction in the city's housing market is far from over. The market route has pushed some developers' valuations to extreme levels, but analysts say it is still too early to sound the all-clear for these stocks. Home prices in Hong Kong have dropped 18% from a record high in 2021 to the lowest in more than six years, as rising mortgage rates and a sluggish economic recovery take their toll. Societe Generale expects another 10% to 15% decline next year. Developers are expected to cut their dividends to cope with rising financing costs and slower revenue growth. Oil prices, defense stocks rise as Israel-Hamas conflict rattles markets. Wall Street Journal. Oil prices and defense stocks rose after the worst attack on Israel in decades shook financial markets. 
Concerns that the Israel-Hamas war would escalate into a broader conflict in the Middle East that limits oil supply sent energy prices higher. Shares of defense contractors also rose, and investors sought haven assets like gold. Major U.S. stock indexes initially looked set for declines but rebounded in afternoon trading. The war's impact on Wall Street was strongest on shares of defense companies, energy firms, and airlines, but the broader stock market remained unscathed. Nothing I'd ever experienced in my life, paying for storage after losing his rental left mark facing homelessness. ABC. More than 25,000 people are waiting for social housing in Queensland, Australia, and about 500 social housing properties have been built each year since 2017, according to Queensland Department of Housing data. At the National Housing Conference in Brisbane this week, delegates will look to find solutions to the country's homelessness crisis. The number of people needing social housing will rise in 2026 when the National Rental Affordability Scheme comes to an end, according to Emma Greenhalgh, CEO of National Shelter. Those households could potentially become homeless, she said. Nat has been at the coalface of the mental crisis for over a decade. Now he's blowing the whistle. ABC. Patients with severe mental illness in Queensland, Australia, are reportedly being forced to sleep on the floor or couches due to chronic bed shortages at the Royal Brisbane and Women's Hospital, RBWH. Some patients have had to wait several days in the emergency department for a bed. The hospital's mental health unit is struggling to cope with the demand, resulting in acutely unwell adult patients being placed in other hospital wards or with teenage mental health patients. A clinical nurse at the hospital has come forward as a whistleblower to highlight the failing mental health system and the need for more beds and an independent review of the RBWH's mental health services. The number of beds in the mental health units at the hospital has remained largely unchanged for decades, despite significant population growth in Brisbane and increased demand for mental health services. In 2022-2023, there were 65,405 mental health presentations to emergency departments across Queensland. In response to the shortage of beds, patients are being allocated beds outside the mental health ward in other wards of the hospital. The Metro North Mental Health Executive Director stated that this practice is not unusual and ensures that patients can access treatment and specialist care in a timely manner. However, mental health professionals argue that this is not an acceptable solution and that more beds are desperately needed. The former Executive Director for Metro North Mental Health said that the Psychiatric Emergency Center, PEC, at the RBWH, which is responsible for assessing and treating mentally unwell patients who arrive at the emergency department, has become a holding bay for mental health patients who are left waiting in limbo. The Queensland government has committed to improving mental health services and has funded 69 new mental health beds in addition to the existing 1,658 beds in the state. However, mental health professionals argue that there is still a bed shortfall and that more beds and community mental health staff are needed to address the issue. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your favorite observer from the Six Degrees world, Dr. Six here. Today, we've got quite an interesting mix of news stories, ranging from property deals in Nordic countries to housing pledges in the UK. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into the world of real estate and housing. First up, we have a Nordic fund, NREP, making the most of Sweden's real estate crisis by snatching up properties from struggling landlords. It seems they're taking advantage of indebted companies looking to offload properties they can no longer afford to finance. Smart move, NREP. Meanwhile, across the pond in the UK, Sir Keir Starmer is making housing promises in his leader's speech. If Labour wins the next election, he plans to give extra powers to housing and local mayors, accelerate building on unused urban land, and build new towns near English cities. But can he deliver on these promises? We'll have to wait and see. Over in Hong Kong, things are getting muddy. Haitong Securities is offering a hefty premium to buy out its struggling subsidiary, Haitong International Securities Group. However, the lack of transparency on the subsidiary's assets is preventing this deal from setting a benchmark for other brokerages with exposure to China's real estate market. It seems the property woes in Hong Kong are far from over. Speaking of property troubles, Chinese developer Country Garden Holdings is feeling the heat of the debt crisis. As China's housing market continues to decline, Country Garden is struggling to meet its offshore debt obligations. They've even defaulted on a $60 million loan. Yikes! Let's hope they can find a way to resolve these issues. But hey, it's not all doom and gloom in the housing world. Tiny homes are becoming the hot new accessory for homeowners looking to lower their housing costs. These accessory dwelling units, ADUs, can be standalone homes or located in existing structures like basements or garages. It's a creative way to increase housing supply and make a little extra income. 
maybe it's time to downsize, folks. Moving on to Singapore, they're taking the fight against rising sea levels seriously. The city-state is planning to reinforce its coastal barriers, build tide gates and embankments, and even raise the height of airport runways. Businesses are also doing their part, with property companies like City Developments and Fraser's Property implementing their own measures to combat flooding. It's a race against time to protect $50 billion in real estate. Let's hope they can stay afloat. Back to Hong Kong, where the housing market is in a bit of a slump. The recent rout in developers' shares might make them seem like a bargain, but analysts are warning that the correction isn't over yet. Home prices have dropped significantly, and more declines are expected. Developers will likely have to cut dividends to cope with rising costs and slower revenue growth. It seems the housing market still has a bumpy road ahead. Now, let's talk about the recent Israel-Hamas conflict and its impact on the markets. Oil prices and defense stocks rose as concerns grew about a broader conflict in the Middle East that could disrupt oil supply. Shares of defense contractors saw a boost, and investors sought haven assets like gold. While the conflict rattled the markets, the broader stock market remained relatively unscathed. It's a reminder of how geopolitical events can have ripple effects on the economy. Finally, let's turn our attention to the housing crisis in Australia. More than 25,000 people are waiting for social housing in Queensland, and the number is expected to rise when the National Rental Affordability Scheme comes to an end. The homelessness crisis is a pressing issue, and delegates at the National Housing Conference will be looking for solutions. It's heartbreaking to hear stories of people like Mark, who faced homelessness after losing his rental. We need to find better ways to ensure everyone has a roof over their heads. Well, folks, that's it for today's news roundup. I hope you enjoyed our journey through the world of real estate and housing. Now it's your turn to join the conversation. What are your thoughts on these stories? Do you have any ideas for tackling the housing crisis? Let's hear your thoughts. Until next time, this is Dr. Six signing off. Stay curious, my friends. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the Six Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of Six Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the Six Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize Six Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, sixdobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive Six Do Brief by email.